myself to move in. If he steps back, boom, it's more of a long range attack. Boom, I'm moving in. Oh shit. <laughs> All right, welcome to the YouTube channel. So what we're gonna do here is look at the birds of Bagua Zhang. So in Bagua, we have Falcon and Phoenix and they operate a little bit differently. If we're hooked up here, a Phoenix likes to hook and throw a lot, it works this way, but they also use the elbows a lot. One of the main drills in our curriculum works the elbows this way. So it can be used offensively and defensively. We'll come back to that one. But another thing to note is this Falcon animal. Now Falcon works, differently than Phoenix. Phoenix likes to hook, throw, elbow, this type of thing. Uses good footwork. Now Falcon is more chopping and stalking. So think of a falcon out in the wild. It sees its prey and it's become, it, it gets laser focused on its prey. And so that's the attitude of the animal. There's always two parts, the form, the shape, the fighting, and then the uh, attitude and personality or the spirit of the animal. So one way we can look at that with falcon is a lot of trapping or mid-range fighting and boxing in this domain. Not so much long range. This is more for other animals like snake. Snake specializes at long range. When we're close together, this is good for lion and bear. I can have my head butts. I can have my crushing palms. I can have my arm breaks right here. That's more lion. So what we're gonna be exploring is this mid range here. Now, what happens is the falcon likes to start off uh, its attacks or defenses with a chop. So as we're here, that's the, going to be the first part. Replaying that a little bit, tap, tap, go in. Now notice how he slipped out of the way and blocked, okay? Now, we always want to assume in our uh, sparring and fighting curriculum that the first one will get blocked. And that way we're not surprised when it happens. So we have a counter for it. But if for some reason he's spaced out, boom, I get that nose, right? I get those teeth, you know, I cause a little bit of damage. So I go, whack, I could go right into his nose. But that's simply a stealing step. I just kind of step and correct. I close the distance if I'm the one moving towards him. If I'm the one on the offensive, I step and correct. As that happens, arms up please, I'm going to work in this way, okay? And so this is gonna be more of a palm like this, but it's just there for for a second. Now he is blocking us, so what do we do? We're going to go here and go ahead and pin that hand. Let's switch around to the other side. So we're here. I'm gonna go tap, tap, go in and trap this hand. So you'll notice it's a chop followed by a chop, okay? Again, the falcon likes to chop and attack the limbs, attack with the edge of the palm, this sort of thing. So anyway, we want to also pin this because it could be the counter to my attack. So as I go tap, tap in, I'm going to pin because if I don't, I go here, boom, he can come back with that hand, right? Very common tactic. He hits, boom, I come in right away. He throws that hand, I come in this way, right? So it's generally just kind of like a parry and attack back. Now, I'm going to go tap, tap. Wrist elbow, wrist elbow chop, and then stealing step, wrist elbow chop, and pin. Now, the reason why I wanna do this is it loads up this right hand again. This could hit, uh, obviously, right? I could go here and hit him, but what if he just kinda ducks under, slips under, right? So that, as an attack, could be dodged. But if I'm going for the center of his body, that's harder to dodge. His head can move around. The center of his body is gonna be easier to uh, move towards. And at that time, the way we're setting up this technique, his hand will be in front of his body. So it looks like this. And this way, it's hard for him to counterattack. And for some reason, if uh, sweat got into my eyes or uh, you know, I had a trouble seeing for whatever reason, uh, I can tactilely feel him, right? Okay, so I'm here, boom, okay. Now at this time, I'm loaded up for this right hand again, so it's gonna come straight in and chop. I'm gonna shoot it right by his ear, right? If I get this one, that's great, but I'm going to assume I don't get that. From here, I'm going to pin and go into attack again. Now he's gonna have a hard time getting this hand up uh, because this, <laughs> 
forearm is bridging both arms. And then this way I can go in and hit freely. Now, let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm gonna work that way. Right here. It looks like that, okay? Now, what I'm going to work now is the idea of what if. So when it comes to training your applications and then functionalizing your art, getting it to the place where it goes from compliant partner to a non-compliant partner, that's a progression of study. And that's where traditional martial arts fail oftentimes. They train applications, but they don't bring that into a flow of ever-changing environment, uh, an ever-changing distance and uh, body type, uh, striking uh, attitude, and so on. So we need a little bit of help in the right direction. What we're going to do is play with the concept of what if. What if I do this and instead of getting the hit, like we already saw, right? But in this case, what if not getting the second hit he buys, uh, because he stepped back. Let's look at that. I go here, I trap and I'm going to move in, but he's not there, okay? So I need to be ready for that. So as I do this, see if I'm moving forward, I'm going to be able to clip him, okay? Now this is nice because if he stays there, I hit him. If he doesn't stay there, he moves back, which is a common reaction, backpedaling, flailing your arms up what have you. Um, uh, this way you can uh, keep the energy going. So let's say he doesn't move. Boom, I'm going to get my body weight through him. Okay, let's just go slow. Boom, as I move through him. You see that? Now if he moves back, boom, it's more of a long range attack. Let's get the other side again. So we're here, boom, he doesn't move. Boom, I'm going to step through and demolish him, okay? If he steps back, boom, it's more of a long range attack, right? So it's going to just clip right here, right above the lip or on the nose. This is a nice little sweet spot here, okay? Now that's going to be our falcon drill we're working with today. There's lots of other ways of attacking as a falcon. Uh, but we're going to work with this one today. Now let's look at the other bird. Let's bring back the phoenix, okay? So let's say I don't get that, that hit at the end. As I'm going here, he steps back and he's coming back with this type of attack, okay? Now the phoenix drill I'm going to work here is up, up, side, side, up, up, side, side, up, up, side, side, okay? So this is a nice aggressive movement. I'm just moving in this way and I'm clipping them as I'm moving in. I'm almost like a tornado and there's a, a bunch of uh, 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 iron and metal sheets and bob wire just swirling around in that tornado. So I'm just surrounding myself with sharp objects, right? I'm cutting, but this could also be used defensively. Go ahead and just give me some slaps on the temple. Boom, on the temples. Boom, 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 okay? So with this, if I just start doing the drill, I might kind of dodge or negate or muffle a lot of those, yeah? It doesn't need to be pretty. So what I'm going to work is that drill in flow in response to his counterattack. So it's a nice quick reflex. It's a nice, oh shit moment, yeah? Okay, so as I go in here, boom, I'm moving in. Oh shit, boom. See how I defended myself, okay? Again, let's look at that. Boom, I'm moving in, I miss. Get those elbows up, you'll protect your head. You might even get a nice angle if, in which you can begin your wrestling or your counterattack. Oh no, boom, right? So I get those elbows up and I move my body flowing with him. Yeah, let's do that again. Okay, from here, boom, that's the first part. From here, make sure you get the step, step correct. Then we have the pin, okay? And then we have the attack. If he moves back, I chase him. If for whatever reason he moved back in a way that was defensive, ready for a counterattack, then just like you saw, elbows up, do the drill, okay? And you have a, a flow that you could work there. 
Now, the nice thing about this little flow we're putting together is it can be used as a offensive maneuver, but it could also be used defensively. If I am offensive, it looks like this. If I am defensive, he throws the punch, it looks like that, okay? So I'm offensive. I'm defensive, okay? That time I didn't attack him, I just did defensive. But you get the idea. I could use it as a counter if we want to be specific. So offensive, defensive, and a, oh sorry, you attack, counter. Do you see that? So this way we develop nice, quick, responsive uh, hands. And you might be able, I don't know if the mic's picking it up well, but you might be able to hear the smacking on that hand. That's also disrupting. If we wanted to add more disruptions, added layers, we would use like shouting, a key eye type of thing. Just added layers of uh, um, uh, intimidation or uh, aggression, uh, attitude, this type of thing. Very strong presence, really strong energy. Uh, and this would be helpful in uh, building our uh, courage and our, uh, uh, our momentum in the battle. And uh, it also helped to demoralize the other, right? So let's go through it one more time. The drill is tap, tap, in. Now he's blocking. Oh no, what do we do? Well, let's take a look. His hand's right there, so we're going to trap it, okay? Now that he's pinned, I'm going to go ahead and hit. Now, if he's smart, he steps back. If I do this and he steps back, I can't do my technique. So what I want to do is train myself to move in, okay? And not, not stopping the attack. But the thing is, Falcon is the fire trigram. It's attack, yang, yin, yang. It's attack, defend, attack. So even though it's moving forward, there's almost like a subtle defense there, at least mentally, attitude, uh, attitudinal, <laughs> you get the idea, energy-wise. I'm ready to dodge, I'm ready to receive, I'm ready to counter off of whatever he throws. So what happens, I'm attacking, I am yang. Now I'm yin, but it's actually yang. And that's our drill. Okay, so if you're interested in more Bagua lessons, go ahead and go to baguaonline.com. Uh, we've got a full curriculum there that's ever growing. We've got live classes all of the time, and all of them are recorded. It's a very good place to learn Bagua online. Thank you.